All right, today we're going to be learning synthetic division. So, so far for polynomials, we learned addition, subtraction, and multiplication. The other day, we just learned to do long division, and long division, as it's in its name, is long. It takes a while. It's tedious. Synthetic division is a much shorter way to do division. It is kind of a catch though because it only works in certain in instances. Just like long division, organization is really important here. So, here's our first example. 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 28x minus 16 is divided by x plus 2. Now you'll remember we did this problem yesterday to so kind of start off our long division. So what we do is you take your divisor, this x minus 2, or x plus 2, and I want you to solve for the x value. And how you do that is you take x plus 2, you set it equal to 0, and you solve. So it's just x equals negative 2. All right, that goes in this little box that we're going to make up here. Okay, so you put your divisor, that number, into the box. You're then going to take all of the coefficients of your terms and place them on a row right next to the box. So the coefficient for 3x cubed is 3. The coefficient for negative 4x squared is negative 4. For negative 28x, it's negative 28. And then you have your constant term of negative 16. You make a line with a space underneath it. And now we're going to begin the synthetic division. So that was all just part of the setup. So we take, you take this first number and you drop it down under the line. Once it's under the line, in order to move this number back above the line, all right, you need to multiply it by the number in the box. So we need to do 3 times negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Okay, so that's how you move the number above the line. Now we're going to do negative 4 plus negative 6, which gives me negative 10. Remember, in order to move this number above the line, we have to multiply it by the number in the box. Negative 10 times negative 2 is positive 20. Combine those together. Negative 28 plus 20 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 2 is 16. Negative 16 plus 16 is 0. So right here actually tells us our solution. We just got to figure out how to convert it into something we know. Now, if you look here, we took x cubed and we divided it by x. So if you think about this, if I take x cubed and I divide it by x, I get x squared. So you take away one of those degrees. So this 3 right here is actually representing 3x squared. This negative 10 represents the one lower term of negative 10x. And then the negative 8 is just your constant term. So it goes down in decreasing degrees. So that would be my final solution. This 0 here, that last thing is going to be your remainder. So in this instance, we just have a remainder of 0. So some information here. You can only use synthetic division when dividing polynomials in the form x minus a or x plus a. So that's the issue with synthetic division. That's why we can't use it for everything. It can only be when you're dividing by a term like x minus a number, x plus a number. So here's some examples. We can use long division okay, when we're dividing by like something like x cubed or x squared plus 3x minus 1, or when we're dividing by 2x plus 5, or when we're dividing by x squared minus 1. All right, when there's multiple terms, there's a there are coefficient in front of that x term. We can use synthetic division when we're dividing by something like x plus 3 or when we're dividing by x minus 5, or when we're dividing by x plus 1. So those are the only instances in which we can use synthetic division. So it is very limiting. So yes, it is totally the easier method, but we cannot always use it. You can always use long division, but synthetic division, you cannot. So let's do some more examples. All right, this one, we've got x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 8x plus 13 divided by x minus 1. So we have to set up our problem here. We have our box. Remember, your box number is going to be this x minus 1 set equal to 0 and solve. So it's going to be 1. 
You're going to put your coefficients as we have x to the fourth. The coefficient there is 1. x cubed, the coefficient is negative 1. Now you notice we are missing something here. We still need to fill in, just like we did for long division, we need to fill in any holes or uh, space placers. So we have no x squared, so we need to fill in that 0x squared. Okay, so we're going to put in a 0 here for that x squared that we actually don't have. The a x is negative 8. And then we have a constant term of 13. From here, we're going to start our process. You drop down the 1. To move the number above the line, you multiply it by the box number. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. To move it above, multiply by the box number. 0 times 1 is just 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. Negative 8 plus 0 is negative 8. Negative 8 times 1 is negative 8. 13 minus 8 is 5. So in this instance, we have a remainder. All right, now we need to write our final answer. Now, we start off with x to the fourth. And we divide it by x, so it's going to go down one degree. So this is going to represent x cubed. This represents x squared, x, and your constant. Now we have 0x squared and 0x, so technically we don't really need to write those in our final answer. So I would say my final answer is x cubed minus 8 plus your remainder, which is 5, over your divisor, x minus 1. We can also kind of fill in or figure out what your remainder is by doing something else. So if we were to plug in x equals 1 into our original equation here. So 1 to the 4th minus 1 cubed minus 8 times 1 plus 13. Okay, if I plug that in, I get 1 minus 1 minus 8 plus 13, which actually equals Five. So you can see you can end up finding out what your remainder is going to be by plugging in that x value of 1 into your function. So they kind of connect. And this idea is actually called the remainder theorem. So the remainder theorem states if a polynomial f of x is divided by whoops, x minus a, the remainder, when you do that division, is just f of whatever that a value is if you plug it in. So if I ever asked you what is the remainder going to be, you can kind of do it that way. So we're going to use that division and make it a little bit more complex by having some more higher level thinking questions. We says find k so that we have the polynomial 2x cubed plus 7x squared plus kx minus 2 um, divisible by x plus 1. So you want it to be divisible by that. So we want it to work out. And when you see divisible by, that means no remainder. So our remainder is going to be 0. Okay, so let's set up our synthetic division. In our box, we're going to put the number negative 2, because that's the opposite of that x plus 2 there. We're going to put our coefficients. So we have x cubed. So up in front of there is 2. In front of the x squared is 7. In front of the x is just k. And, and our constant term is negative 2. So we need zero placeholders for this. All right, I'm going to drop down my first number, and it's 2. I'm going to move it up. I'm going to multiply by the box number. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 7 plus negative 4 is 3. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Now we can't really combine k and negative 6 to make it one nice term, so it's going to be k minus 6 times k minus 6 times negative 2. So I get negative 2k plus 12. Negative 2 plus negative 2k plus 12 is negative 2k plus 10. Now, this is our remainder. And we said, though, we would have no remainder. So in order to get no remainder, this negative 2k 
plus 10 has to equal 0. So now we can solve for k. So negative 2k minus 10. k equals 5. All right. Another way we can do this is we can use that remainder theorem. So we could say if we plug in negative 2 to our function here. Two, negative two cubed plus seven, negative two squared. Oops, running out of room, maybe not. Stuff so I can do this for you guys. I can do two negative two cubed plus seven negative two squared plus k negative two minus two. So if I do negative 2 cubed, that gives me negative 8. Negative 8 times 2 all right, is negative 16. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 7 is 28. Uh, k times negative 2 is just negative 2k. Plus that negative 2 there. If I combine these, I get negative 2k plus 10. Again, we want to be divisible, so we want it to equal 0. So you end up getting the same thing here. So you can either do it with the remainder theorem or you can do the synthetic division to help you find those missing values. Now, what I want you to do here is I have two problems I want you to try on your own. So I want you to pause this video, do it on your own. I'm going to quickly tell you what those answers are. Um, so if you're not in class, uh, come to me the next day and if you got them right, you're good to go. But if you didn't get them right, ask me why and I will gladly explain it to you. Um, so the question here is, is x minus 1 a factor of it? And it's going to be a no and here, the height of the triangle, the height of the triangle.